the Tigers opening game on Saturday against Russia at the FIBA Basketball World Cup in China. Head coach of the Nigerian team, Alex Nwora, has called for support from the government in funding the basketball team. To be honest, it's been a very tough journey, um, but also I have a lot of help from um, you know a couple of um, edible, um, capable guys that have been working with me, especially my team manager, Musa Adamu, and also you know, um, President Kida, um, Musa Kida for entrusting me to handle the national team. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been a rocky journey, but um, I think um, you know, we, we, we're here now. We're here now. No need to cry about what, what's in the past. It's in the past. We're, we're moving forward. But um, unfortunately, we, uh, you know, as of now, you know, we have we run into a little stumbling, stumbling block because of um, funding. You know, I think um, you know everything has been coming from one one source, which is uh, Engineer Musa Kido. As of now, the ministry haven't released anything since, I, since I've been here. I haven't, really, I haven't seen anything from the ministry. Uh, if I if they've done, I don't know. I wasn't aware of it. But as of now, I don't even know when we're gonna travel. You know, we you know, and um, we came to Nigeria just to present him to the country. But also, there is no help from um, the ministry for the funding that's supposed to be that we're supposed to use to travel and. Most of these NBA players that we brought to play for Nigeria, this is their first time they're coming here. And if, um, you know, being honest, if they don't, if we don't show them love and also um, good preparation and and um, showing that we're more organized as a country to make sure that they, you know, the government do their own part, it's gonna be tough to have them back here to represent Nigeria. We're just gonna go back to what we, you know what we're doing before. We're making big strides. We're ranked number eight in the world now, you know, for for this World Championship. That says a lot about the work that we've done with, within these two years that I've been here. You know, so um, it's, it's um, disheartening just to see that we've come to this point um, that when your own government doesn't, you know, want to release the, you know, release the funds to make it easier for us to be able to do our jobs. Um, but again, you know, I, I still applaud the president for all his um, effort personally to make sure that we get here, we train, we travel. Um, but again, we, again, we need help. We need help now. Um, as of now, I don't even know when we're going to travel. So that's the type of um, 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 road that we've taken to get to this point. You know, so it hasn't been easy. That's what I mean by it's a rough terrain, but it's Nigeria. But now that we're here going to walk up, we shouldn't be crying about this. We should have been taking care of the funds should have been available, made really available for the preparation for us to, you know, for, for, for us to be able to do our job. But if that fund is not really available for the preparation, you know, we're gonna run into a problem with all these guys coming here, and then you know, it's gonna then it's gonna affect the performance. Performance. You're not gonna expect us to go there to win if we're not properly taken care of as a as a national team. We play, we're representing Nigeria, and somebody's sitting somewhere and not doing what they're supposed to do. It's not fair for us. Onwara, who has also been the head of men's basketball coach at the Erie Community College, Buffalo, New York, since 1999 speaks on the impact of the pre-World Cup campaign in the United States on the Tigers. I think, I think you can see that we're ready. You know, with the talent level, it, this is the first time they've, they've um, invited 44 players to, to compete for two spots for the national team that I, I've ever known uh, that I can, say, I can count on. Um, so we have so much talent. We have so much talent abroad, home and abroad, that, you know, um, if we with the right preparation you know we can still produce every time we step out there to represent nigeria and that's why a little bit i'm a little bit disappointed in um you know um the financial aspect of it not not coming from the go government side that the situation is just struggling to make sure that we they do everything to make us comfortable but again the ministry side is not doing their own part and it's, it's disheartening because you look at what we have here you got a couple of nba guys you know, and we went to Canada. You know, all this is, is funded by the federation, by the by the president. You know, went to Canada, went to Dominican Republic, and we were able to to show what we can do. We three and one on on somebody's stuff. But all those teams are going to the World Cup, and they ranked ahead of, of Nigeria before. So that shows you the type of um, talent and caliber of players that we bring into that are willing to come and play for us now. And if if we don't take care of them the right way. It's not. It's not even me or the federation. It's the, it's the country. The country will suffer. They're gonna lose these guys to somebody else, you know. And they want to come and play for Nigeria. So whatever they can do to make sure they help the federation to facilitate that. Uh, I'm the head coach. I don't even know when I'm traveling to China because of fun. So that's we're here now, and uh, it, it's tough to to explain that to, to NBA players and my players. 
that have sacrificed their life, left everything they're doing to, to represent the country. Onwora also speaks on his decision to draft his son, Jordan Onwora, into the Nigerian basketball senior team. Well, I, you know, I, he's always been an elite shooter since he was a kid. Um, he played in one of the toughest um, EYBL um, youth league in the uh, in United States and is one of the best shooters in the country for his age. Um, you know, was well, highly recruited, have almost 40 something offers, scholarship offers in the United States. Supposed to go to the NBA draft, he went into the NBA, and invited to the NBA combine, uh, combine. But um, as God may have it, he was he had a little injury, and um, didn't want to go first, didn't want to risk going second round. He wants to be a lottery pick, and um, you know he would have he would have been drafted first late first round. Everybody knows that, but he decided to go back to school um, just to make sure that he's a lottery pick. You know, he would have been in the NBA this year if he wanted to, but. He wanted to do it the right way. It's not about money. He wants to be an elite. He wants to. He has a dream of being a lottery pick, and that's what he's shooting for. And he has shown it. His game. He's the leading scorer for Louisville. He's the leading, you know, leading rebounder for them. He's done it all. He just played um, two games for us. Um, this um, um, exhibition game against Canada. First game, you know, just played a little bit better. But second game, he led us in scoring and um, almost rebound. You know, so again, he's um, he's one of those kids that you know he gives you everything he has. Um, being a, a coach's son, he's been around the game all his life, so his IQ is very high. He's a, he's a pro already, you know. Um, for 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 somebody who wants to represent his father's land, I will be I will be dis it will be a dishonor for me to hide my son from Nigerians when I know he can help us. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not bragging, but I, he can shoot with the best of them now in the league in the NBA. How does the Nigerian basketball head coach handle the father and son relationship? With Jordan in the Tigers team, I, I, I probably I, I tell you to ask his players because they will tell you that I'm, I'm hard on him more than anybody, yeah. and that's all, the only way, all, only way I've always coached him, and that's why he's where he is today. You know, he's one of those players that um, he embraces some um, challenge. He wants to get better. He's a gym rat. He's, you know, he's, I think um, you know if he wasn't my son, he would see, I, I will I would be worried to play, to play against him if he wasn't my son because I know what he can do, and also seeing him from little young age to now and everybody in the United States can tell you the same thing. He's an elite kid, that's why he was gonna, you know, I up all said and done, he's gonna be a lottery pick this year. And in spite of the setbacks, how prepared is Nigeria for the FIBA World Cup? You don't lose sleep like I'm saying now. You, I start losing sleep if I don't get help from the from the government, from the ministry to help the federation so we can do our job. I always believe in hard work. Regardless of what happened we've been we've been on this stuff for two years now. We've been on this journey for two years, two and a half years almost. So it's not about, you know, I believe in the work that we put in through the Federation and, and the sacrifice the President had made personally to make sure that, it, you know, we're here. Um, so it, it's um, the sleep I'm losing now is the help from the Ministry and the funding to help the, the Federation so we can be able to do our job the right way. Nigeria will play in the same group with Russia, Argentina and South Korea at the FIBA World Cup.